You see what I'm saying? I remember, I remember when I, I um, first started preaching. I, I look back at some of my sermons and bless those poor people's hearts. I should track them down and just write all of them an apology for having to endure. I was in college at Indiana Wesleyan. I remember where I was. I was walking down. Um, how many? Jen, you went to Indiana Wesleyan. Who else went? Anybody else go to Indiana Wesleyan? Jen, Shatford Hall. There between. Um, Shatford was, yeah. Bowman was the one far back. Shatford was, it was between College Church and Shatford. Y'all don't know that. This was just a Jen and me moment. I was walking down that sidewalk between Shatford and McCon, and I had just, or not McCon, but College Church and Shatford. And I had just preached probably the worst sermon of my life. I don't even know what it was, where I was, but, but it just blessed their hearts. It stunk to high heaven. And I remember walking down that sidewalk, and I remember saying, God, I know you don't make mistakes. But I kind of think you made a mistake in calling me to this. And the Lord said to me, who are you to question my choice? Who are you to tear down my servant? And he was talking about me. But we do that, don't we? Can't do anything right. Who are you? You've forgotten your place. Well, I'm just... Uh, I'm just, leave it to me. I'll mess it up. Whoa, 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 whoa. You're speaking about God's creation. You understand what I'm saying? That's not humility. That's a trick of the enemy. Who are you to question what God has done? Who are you to question how God has made you? Who is the potter, or who is the clay to say to the potter, you messed up, God? You see, humility is that. It's the accurate view of who we are. Hmm. Wow. So how do we receive it? Well, here's the kicker. You can't obtain humility. Trying to obtain humility results in pride and being proud. Because if you think you've obtained it, the minute you think you've obtained humility is the minute you get proud about it and you lose it. Because the minute you think you've obtained humility, you got a sense of accomplishment, ha, ah, I'm humble. And then your humility or whatever you obtain just goes right out the window. You understand what I'm saying? Humility is not an issue of, of obtaining something. It's an issue of receiving the mind that was in Christ, letting him put that in you. It's an issue of letting him transform the way you think. It's an issue of admitting that you were wrong about how you were thinking and letting him shift it. Humility is as much an, it's, it's as much an issue of surrender and dependence as it is an issue of not thinking about yourself. Does that make sense? Humility, I surrender. Humility. I'm depending on you, God. It's the understanding that I must live with as much dependence on God as I did when I was brought into this world. Did anyone bring themselves into this world? Chuck Norris, the only one that did. Nathan's book. Chuck Norris was, he's got this book of all these Chuck Norris sayings. It's really funny. Chuck Norris, and, and Chuck Norris wrote the book, which is kind of ironic. Chuck Norris was born in a log cabin that he built with his own hands. <laughs> That's one of my favorites, all right? It's bizarre. Not even Chuck Norris brought himself into this world. No one has. So humility is lived out when we understand that we are just as dependent on God through every moment of the day as we were to come into this world to begin with. And I can't grasp that. i got to let him shape me. And I've got to surrender to it. And I've got I've to respond when he begins to point out where I become puffed up in my flesh. 
And they've got to be okay because God understands. And that's one of the reasons I love Psalm 103. It says, as a father pities his son who serves him, so the Lord pities those who serve him. For he knows our frame. He remembers that we are dust. Amen. What an awesome God. So, so we, we don't, God doesn't point out our lack of humility or our pride to get us to, to beat us up with it. He points it out so that we can get back in place. He puts us back in our place, but he does it because he loves us, and he does it in such a loving way. And with that putting in our place, and the reason he puts us in our place, there is a lifting that comes. You see, God's desire is to make us like us, but we can't, or make us like him, but we can't become like him until we get out of the way and let him make us like him. So that's why he says, humble yourself. In James and in 2 Peter, he says, humble yourself in the sight of the Lord, and he will lift you up. We try to lift ourselves up without humbling ourselves. Surrender. That's it. Surrender and dependence. And, and here's the thing, guys. That doesn't stop just because it happens once, just because we showed a humble attitude. I graciously let the person with the 60 items go in front of me in the 10-item lane. I've got it. I'm humble. I blew it. Just because I'm humble once doesn't mean I'm still not dependent on God. There will never be a point when we're not dependent on him for it. Do you understand what I'm saying? There will never be a point when we live in independence from him. But that's the peace. That's the joy that we remember who he is and who he's made us to be. Now stand with me if you will. Marsh, come up and just play something softly. Because I, I want us to take a, just a few minutes and just let the Lord search us.